agency, we're currently projecting a revenue of $170.2 million. Most public schools are in need of funds, but Highlands has so much money, they're giving it away. Between donations and renting this stadium out for a year, Highlands has paid 80 grand to a professional baseball league in Marysville. Yet no classes take place at this stadium, sources say. And that's not all we found in the school's records. $140,000 went to a youth basketball organization founded by their deputy director. 80 grand for a Pebble Beach golf tournament. Highlands has also given over a hundred grand to a political group that influences voters. And recently, Highlands executive director Doc Smith told his 500 plus employees he'd pay them to see a movie he enjoyed. If I pay you each employee one hundred fifty dollars if you watch it. Those are just a few ways Highlands spends your tax dollars. How does this help their students? That's what our sources wonder. It's also what education expert Dr. Frank Adamson asks when researching charter schools. Are you spending the money in the benefit of the students and the families versus diverting it towards more private interests? We asked Highlands. Highlands receives something directly benefiting students in return for all of its support for not-for-profit organizations, like assistance with student outreach and recruitment. They did not answer our question, asking if paying for a basketball organization run by their deputy director was a conflict of interest, or when exactly that expense was approved by their board. But I just, I want to, if you ever saw the movie The Martian, Matt Damon says, when you're, when you're worried, do the math. Do the math. Our fund balance is well above what it's supposed to be. We have more resources in the classroom than anybody. Yet credit card statements show Highland spends outside the classroom often. In just three months, they spent over $3,400 at fine dining establishments, like this steakhouse at a casino. We asked Highlands how they justify these charges. They did not respond. When we previously asked Doc Smith why Highlands leaders have traveled to places like Maui, Pebble Beach, and France, he credited lobbying. We have to do that because we have to survive. Those places aren't vacations. So that's part of the conundrum of charters is that they receive public money, but they're privately operated. Like all public schools, Highlands gets money from students' attendance, and where they can bring in even more is online. Where you can potentially have 10,000 students in one classroom. Highlands Online Independent Study Site is called the California Innovative Career Academy, or SICA for short. And that's where the independent study model becomes a cash cow because we're able to quote unquote serve more students on paper. Concerned about retaliation, this source from SICA, the online side, asked us to hide their identity. We'll call them Alex. We would just keep swallowing up more and more students beyond capacity, well beyond capacity. While the in-person side has more students, the online side has grown faster, from 169 students to over 2,200 in the last four school years, Highlands reported. That's a 1,200% increase. What underlies that the ulterior motive isn't to help more students, it's Money making. The school told ABC 10 SICA will generate over $56 million this school year from attendance. For online classes, attendance is taken differently. One way is for teachers to submit students' work to the state to prove that they were there. Specifically worksheets or homework assignments that they completed. But because SICA grew so fast, you were never able to complete compliance reports on time. To keep up, Alex said they'd work backwards, marking students in attendance, and then later submitting homework samples to prove it. But there was a problem. We would realize, oh, this student hasn't been active for the past year. How is it that they're still enrolled? They need to track down over a thousand students for work samples. Sometimes the student would just disappear on us. And so we've already vetted and confirmed that they've attended for that learning period. So we have to, let's say, magically come up with their work samples. Fabrication, yeah. The same student's work would also be used over and over, another source said. Each packet was counted again as extra hours or for the days they missed. 
fabrication for years, sources say. Highlands denies this. All student work samples are original and complete, and that allegations that suggest otherwise are false. But sources say it's another way Highlands capitalizes off newly arrived immigrants. Because we're well beyond capacity, you can't serve the students that you currently have by accepting more and more students. Causing issues not just online, but also for in-person classes. Highlands loads up a single class with hundreds of students, as reported in our last episode. Beginner students that are not able to really learn the language at all. Highlands told ABC10 they're working to keep up with the demand by expanding and recruiting more teachers. Who's vetting this? Who's auditing this? How do you keep track of all those students? That's why the school accountability report card is important. Nicknamed the SARC, California law requires every school board submit this annual report to the Department of Education. But in their report card, Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools did not tell the state about any oversized classes. 18 students. That's the average in-person class at Highlands, the school initially reported for the 2022-2023 school year. And online, only nine students, they said. Do you know how many rosters have hundreds of students on them? Do you know how many teachers do not have enough seats in their classrooms for those students? This discrepancy was called out directly to the Highlands board. Several Highlands teachers currently have 300 plus on their rosters. That's right, 300 plus students. ABC 10 reviewed the last nine years of the school accountability report cards Highland submitted, and we discovered they've never reported any class sizes over 40, neither in person or online. That means they omitted their overcrowded beginner English classes for years. So why are the majority of our students not reflected in the class average data? The school report card also does not require Highlands to track English language students' progress. That means there's no way of knowing if students are actually learning or benefiting from funds the school receives, inside sources say. When asked, Highlands didn't answer this question. A number of other issues in the latest report card were also brought to the board's attention. Our grade level data is not included, and the course subject data is both inaccurate and misleading. I don't believe Highlands has a site in Illinois like it says in the SARC. This former employee was also concerned about Highland's budget. $26 million. So that's money that's spent outside of the classroom. From all these issues, a single request was made of the Highlands board. I respectfully ask that you as a board delay the approval of the SARCs. I would request that you not approve the SARC until the errors are found. After this request, Mark Lutkin took the podium. I would be always happy to present any updates to any of that information. I'm very happy to make those adjustments. He's in charge of their accountability report card, and when we reached out to him directly, he did not respond. But to the board, Lutkin promised he'd change the report card. It's a document that is very important. And with that, pending correction. Of course. After the board meeting, we tried to ask Highlands board president Ernie Daniels about the school accountability report card he just approved. Mr. Daniels, do you mind if we ask you a couple questions? I don't have anything to say at this time. Okay, we're just wondering if you have any response to the folks who spoke up today at the meeting in terms of the fiscal concerns and the attendance concerns. Do you have any sort of response? No response to those? He didn't answer our questions. I, I, truly, I truly do want to speak with you and include your voice, so I'll make sure to reach out soon. We did reach out. He declined. So we asked if any of Highland's nine board members would be willing to speak with us. They all said no. Yet in the next board meeting, to the public who's listening, Highland's board secretary, Matt Power, said they welcome public so scrutiny. We're not hiding anything. If Highlands Board says this, why won't they give us an interview? That's what we asked the school. They didn't respond. They did say they welcome accountability and fully cooperate and comply with the agencies tasked with overseeing the school. They also said, we are disappointed ABC 10 has spent months criticizing Highlands based on hearsay and vague accusations by misinformed, disgruntled former employees and anonymous sources. First of all, many ex-employees. And, and current, if you, and current you employees. Get some. A narrative executive director Doc Smith has been pushing since we began investigating Highlands. I'm not disgruntled. I still believe in the mission that Highlands and Seeker are doing. It's leadership's focus on profit rather than students. 
That's the problem, Alex and other sources say. I think I have a responsibility to speak truth to power. Weeks after their February board meeting, Highlands changed their 2022-2023 SARC data for both their in-person and online school SICA. There's just been a few other things that have been updated. They told ABC10 they changed a number of things, including how they capture class sizes. Changes that came only after ABC10's investigation and Highlands' own employees calling out these issues. But we found Highlands reports inconsistent data often. We've been carefully following numbers Highlands reports for over six months and have seen the figures fluctuate drastically. When we asked Highlands about attendance records, they said enrollment varies due to open enrollment, transfers, students leaving, and students graduating. But they did not clarify how many students are currently enrolled when asked. The enrollment numbers should not change this drastically, experts we spoke to say. Twin Rivers Unified School District is responsible for ensuring Highlands reports are accurate. After our initial investigation, the public had a lot to say to Twin Rivers. Many of us have seen the investigative report by ABC News 10 encapsulating the tale of corruption at work right in our community. The extent that was exposed is reprehensible. Highlands pressures teachers and paraeducators to inflate ADA. You are paid to provide financial oversight. Please, please, I am begging you to do better. None of the Twin Rivers board members responded to these comments. So we tried to speak with Superintendent Dr. Steven Martinez. There's only certain things that we can do as the chartering district. You are but, the oversight committee, though. Correct. Yeah. Correct. For, but they, but for they a also, charter school that has hundreds of millions of dollars, do you think they're spending that properly? But the properly? charter school also has a board. Mm -hmm. And so the board also is exclusive to the charter school. Right. So but when we exclusive. went to the California Department of Education, they specifically said you're the entity in charge of yeah, providing oversight. It's a theme. The California Department of Education says it's Twin Rivers' responsibility to oversee Highlands. Twin Rivers says it's Highlands' board responsibility. And Highlands' board won't talk to us. Neither will Twin Rivers. We asked Dr. Martinez for an interview following that board meeting. He never responded. And now, four California legislators have requested an audit of Twin Rivers, as well as Highlands, Sika, and the Doc Smith Legacy Foundation. There are concerns about luxury travel, retreats to San Diego, trips to France. I am a former school board member, and I've never heard of uh, any, any uh, abuses like that. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we investigate this uh, fully, thoroughly. We've also seen multiple resignations from Highlands, including Special Projects Coordinator Daniel Hahn, as well as Doc Smith's right-hand man, Highlands Deputy Director Kevin Taylor. Kevin Taylor should be the Executive Director of Highlands Community Charter School. Highlands would not specify how many people resigned since our investigation aired, or comment on Kevin Taylor and Daniel Hahn leaving. And Linda Fowler, who played a big role in founding Highlands, a topic we covered in our first episode, lost her re-election bid to the Twin Rivers Unified School District for the first time since 1971. But it's not enough, our sources say. The Highlands Board, Twin Rivers, or the California Department of Education, three entities that are supposed to be providing oversight. Do you have any message for all of them, for any of them? Get your head out of your ass. They have a responsibility to do something about this. These oversight entities need to ensure Highlands operates legally and ethically, they say, especially as many did not realize what they were doing at Highlands may have been illegal. It's school's responsibility. They don't need to teach the students to cheat the system. The school needs to teach them the right thing. 